My name is Jenny Landis. I am a teacher in a small rural school in Northwest Wisconsin. Um, and currently I am lucky enough to be serving as a teacher representative on our Educational Foundation of Birchwood. Hey, my name is Brad Wozniak and I'm a small business owner in Menominee, Wisconsin. Uh, more importantly, I am a husband and father of three children that have been through a public education system and uh, we have definitely benefited. Uh, our Apples for Teachers program, which is in Birchwood, uh, basically came from the passions of the teachers in the school. Uh, I was just struck by the commitment to the kids, the commitment to a professional developed program. I was really just amazed at the laser focus towards learning. And, and really, for me, we all wake up trying to make a difference in our lives. But the whole entire staff and leadership team was just committed to kind of that service before self. As they are going through the course of their day teaching the kids, we were hearing stories of they needed a little bit of money for this and a little money for that. It didn't fit into the grant request uh, timeline. Um, and they were actually spending some of their own hard-earned money, money from their own families, and spending that money on the kids. Our foundation basically requests grant requests written to the board of directors on a cycle one to two times a year. That process is fairly formal. That process is somewhat, you know, very structured. And what was amazing and kind of talking with some of the teachers, they were willing to take some of their own money. And it can be as simple as development or presentation paper to little helpful aids, et cetera. But what we did is brought that back to our board. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to serve on one of the greatest boards, the Education Foundation of Birchwood. Uh, Foss Soper, our leader, and the whole team is committed to not really the teachers by themselves, but the teachers and the impact on the education and on the kids. Um, when you look at the concept, if you look at apples for teachers as an equation, uh, you'd think the focus is on the teachers. But what we found is if you invest in those teachers, the kids are the primary beneficiary. The kids are the ones that have the most impact. So we looked at a way, and the key when we did this, we had to make sure that the most impact would be received, but it couldn't be a cumbersome process. It really needed to be something that was easy, that was uh, quick, that was efficient. And so when we discussed it, what we did is develop a amount, generally $100 to $200, that teachers could feel comfortable spending money on what they thought was best for their classroom, but not to have to go through the normal bureaucracy or red tape, as you call it. Um, to get that request and literally just submit their expense, similar to the concept of a business, submit the receipt and be get reimbursed. As a teacher and in talking to other teachers, I have to say it's tremendous. Uh, it's such, it maybe seems like a little thing. I think, you know, like Brad said, just a hundred dollars to, to us that it wasn't started as um, here's twenty dollars, teachers. You can have that. I mean, it started out with here's you know two hundred dollars a year or whatever. So to us, that was like wow. It's it's a big lift to to faculty. You know, the, a motivated, empowered, supported teacher is no. There's no better way to make an impact on a kid and on the learning process. We think it's a program that not only has the most impact impact for the least dollars. But we think it's a program that could literally spread throughout the country. We'll talk about our vision for it a little bit later. The one, two, three that you see on the page here really has um, impacted the learning uh, in my classroom, in my school. First of all, when you look at fundraising, I, 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 for the, if there's any English majors, I apologize. But if you split it up, it should be fun and you should be raising money. So you need to look at the effectiveness of all the programs or what, where you're getting money. Uh, but I call it fun doc raising. And there is no reason to reinvent the wheel. Our goal here is to share 
a program that's worked wonderfully well for Birchwood. We believe it can work in other communities and we're not in competition together. We're collaboratively working together. So the dog part of fundraising that I suggest to people is don't reinvent the wheel. There's already great templates out there for raising money. We're happy to share ours. You can learn from organizations like Lions Club, Rotary Clubs, uh, even Ducks Unlimited and those types of organizations do a great job of raising money, even in this new virtual world that we're living in today. So the dove part of fundraising is don't reinvent the wheel and imitation is the greatest form of flattery and please use anything that we have. For example, um, we do an event called the Kentucky Derby. We've had to cancel it obviously with during COVID time. Um, but if you're basically mirrors, there's some awesome pictures there of people are dressed up nice. The bugler is fantastic. It's really a fun experience, but we basically call it Kentucky Derby North and everyone has a great time and we raise money, but we used to do an event that was neat. It was special, but we'd maybe raise one or $2,000. And we've taken that anytime up to five and 10 times that in this event by just taking it to a different level and making it fun. Uh, we also do a golf tournament that's very successful. I'm a believer you should be running a golf tournament that makes at least 15,000 or you're not doing it right. So if you want ideas on that, we're happy to share. I'm a strong believer if you're gonna do any fundraising, you have to make it something that people are interested in. In Wisconsin, it's easy. You can do anything with the Badgers for you know sports, or if you do anything Green Bay Packer related, people go nuts. Uh, but there's some awesome programs. But uh, from a technical side and the social media side, it's about staying in front of people, staying, getting awareness, getting it out there to lots of people on a regular basis. Today's world, uh, people are at home more. When they're at home more and have a little more time, the things they just used to throw away um, are actually being kept. They're actually reading it. They're actually taking action on some of it. Uh, one mailer for us generated nearly over a half a million dollars simply because we made sure that people were aware who we are, that we're committed to the community, and we will make a difference if they'll invest in us to allow to invest in the kids. But mailers do work. Uh, they are fairly reasonable, but you need to make them impactful, colorful, simple. Uh, most people don't read below the first probably 20 or 30 uh, words and or the first couple sentences. So you need to get your point across really quick with some great material. And again, uh, major kudos to Amy on our board who just does a terrific job of making it look great, making it look appealing. Emails are simply about staying in front of people. We all have our email box full of things that we don't want to get, but it is important to stay in front of, it is important to stay consistent. And emails are a low cost way to make sure people are aware but again, it needs to be fairly impactful. And the key is getting some kind of activity, uh, some kind of communication and making sure you're getting that out. The school and community newspapers are where most of the you know, community is looking at things related uh, to school. Um, I believe it's a key way to make sure you're getting good communication. Um, but if I were to break that down just a little bit, I would suggest community or the word C-O-M. It's about community, it's about communication. But it really is critical that you communicate a message to people that you're committed to making a difference if they give money to you, if they give time to you, if they give their talents to you. So the committed part of that to me is important as you're communicating out through different ways as far as fundraising. Um, our approach for the Apples for Teachers, uh, and I believe people give to a cause, not to general budgets. Um, if you were Exposed to my full presentation on fundraising, I would speak to, if you ask money for general funds, uh, you'll raise a little money here and there. If you ask money for a specific cause and communicate that cause in an appropriate way, you will make 10, 12, 15 times as much money because people want to give to a cause, but you need to clearly, your challenge is to clearly communicate that to them. Find the communication, find the cause, but I also think it's really important if you can find those matching funds, because now when I choose to take a dollar out of my family budget, give it to a cause, if that's being leveraged, one, and we once had a match on a match on a match, we call it a quad match, my dollar or my hundred dollars now becomes four or it becomes 400. There's a lot more impact to my giving, a lot more incentive to my giving, and it also can create a deadline. So it's not open-ended. The match will be through this time. Wanted to share some ideas truly on how to 
fund uh, raise money. I'm Bob Hersher. I am the treasurer of the Educational Foundation of Birchwood. I want to just briefly explain the accounting process of keeping track of the Apples for Teachers accounts. I have a CPA background, but to keep records of the Apples for Teachers doesn't require an accounting background. As treasurer of the foundation, I use QuickBooks Online to keep track of each teacher's account balance. Someone could easily use Quicken or another simple software program. Our educational foundation grants $200 annually to each teacher for Apples for Teachers, $100 in July and $100 in May. However, we don't want the Apples for Teachers to be a savings account. We want to encourage the teachers to use the funds to help in the classroom to be innovative so that the maximum amount that the teachers can accumulate in their individual accounts is $300. I will email the teachers their account balances before the foundation issues another $100 Apple grants to encourage them to use these funds now before July 1st or May 1st and remind them that they may not receive the full $100 if they currently have a balance over $200. We don't have a budget for Apples for Teachers. We just want the teachers to have the $200 per year for their out-of-pocket teaching expenses. When a teacher wants, wants to be reimbursed for their educational expenses, we use a form that the teacher attaches receipts to this form with a brief explanation of what the expense is for. If I'm satisfied that this is an educational expense, and after I check the teacher's Apple account balance, I will then issue a check to the teacher for the expense or for the teacher's account balance, whichever is smaller. In the memo portion of the check to the teacher, I will note the remaining balance in the teacher's Apple account for their information. I then put the check on the teacher's school mailbox. Should the teacher leave the district, that teacher's Apple balance stays with the foundation to be used for other grants. It's all pretty straightforward, fairly simple, as I have only about 33 teacher accounts to keep track of. A larger school, of course, would entail somewhat more work, but really not that much more as the whole process is pretty straightforward. We have been very fortunate to have successful fundraisers and community support for our foundation to support this endeavor. Another funding option that may work for your district is to get community support from your businesses. You may be surprised to see how many businesses will jump at the chance to be a business supporter for an apples for teachers for your elementary or your middle or your high school. If you have any questions on setting up the accounting for apples for teachers, I welcome you to email me and I'll be glad to help you. It really is very simple. So as a teacher, this is what I see. Um, we have copies of this in our office. Um, he also emails out copies to all of us so we can print them. Um, it's as easy as putting my name on there, the amount, attaching the receipt. And also I just write usually about a sentence um, explaining what this uh, purchase was for, what I will use it for in the classroom or how it will help students. Well, um, I believe that I do a lot of paperwork. That is the simplest form I've seen ever. So the process is simple. It is easy, but it is effective. The reason can simply be you needed it in the classroom. And you don't have to go to your superintendent. You don't have to go to the board. Um, we allocate the money. And after that, it's simply between someone who just needs to count for money and money out. Um, but I, I just want to stress sometimes it's hard to go ask for money. This should not feel like that. And Jenny, maybe you can attest to that. But the feedback I've gotten from the teachers is it's easy, it's quick, and I can make the difference right away in the, in the, in the classroom. So uh, don't think of this as a big process. It's very simple and very, very basic. The goal is to share this with others, meaning we will help you get this set up. We will help you. You do not need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we can help you get this started, whether it be the fundraising portion of it, if you're welcome to use our forms, you're welcome to use our process, um, but it really is plug and play. It's not very difficult. Um, my idea for the larger school systems is just digitize that. So it's an online type of quick request, quick response. There's plenty of ways to do that. It can even be done at some level through Venmo and other things. So um, if you have, we have a moderate or a smaller number of teachers to manage to that extent. So it's a little easier, but 
if you have hundreds of teachers in your district, my thought would be to simply automate it and uh, but keep it easy, keep it simple. So our goal is to make a difference in our small community in Birchwood, in our area. A focus of our board has always been that a child that has the zip code 54817 should get no lesser education than someone that grows up in the wealthiest of districts, in the wealthiest of communities, in one of the largest cities. So to do that, uh, we believe these type of programs have great impact. Um, the concept of a franchise is fairly simple, whether you think of it as a subway or whatever it might be. The franchise is simply it's a repeatable process that someone can plug into to increase the probability of success. So, But there's no fees. Uh, there's no cost. And that sometimes is a negative because people don't look at it as something they commit to. But we would argue if you try it, you'll be amazed at the impact it will have at the classroom level, at the kids level. And you'll also be amazed, I think, in regard to the empowerment and support and the morale of teachers will go up. So we would like this to grow to at least 100 schools in five years, um, benefiting thousands of students, making an impact that, you know, may even live beyond our own time. But the term collaboration, we also want to complement what you're doing. So if you have a different way of doing it, that's OK. Um, we are not in competition together. Uh, this can be done with. Uh, programs like Donors Choose and GoFundMe and that type of thing. We're not, uh, we're agnostic, so to speak, where the money comes from. Um, we're committed and passionate about where the money goes. And that really is, if we can improve that education for that child, wherever that child is. And so, you know, if you look at it, deciding, funding it, and implementing it, uh, it's a three step process. Um, but it, it can, it's very efficient. But uh, I would suggest you're going to be amazed at how effective and the outcomes and the metrics that come from this type of program. And so this is the plug and play part, as Brad mentioned, easy as one, two, three. There's some examples. Anything in blue is a link. And also um, by clicking on the name or our logo in the bottom, um, you can get to our website where there's contact information. And people are out there looking for places to make a difference, not just give money. And the Apples for Teachers program, to me, epitomizes this. No better way to make a difference on those kids and what they learn and do in a classroom than investing through the teachers. So the Apples for Teachers program, to me, is just a great way to get that direct impact to the front lines in a quick, efficient, and effective way.